Hello, pharmacology students. Another chat with Brat. I wanted to talk to you about how you can translate this process of extracting things from your textbook to make a medication drug card that you can study from. So this presentation is going to walk you through that process, and hopefully you can apply this to all the drugs that you're going to be held accountable for in this course. So this is going to, again, be a step-by-step -step process on how you build this medication guide or drug card, whatever you want to call it, to help you to study for your exam. And hopefully it's going to help you put those pieces together and really learn how this all goes together so that you can deliver the best possible care. So let's get started. So when you build your medication card, or I'll just call them a drug card, one of the things that you want to be doing is you want to be going back to those W's that we talked about in that prior video. And go back and think about your client. Think about the client that is receiving this drug. So we're gonna go back to Mr. Meyer and we're gonna think about how we're gonna build this medication card based on the fact that he's got congestive heart failure. So remember these W's about what the patient has, what it's used for, what the drug is used for, and why not that that drug should be using. You need to go again and look at the action of the drug. You need to know about those therapeutic effects and also the side effects, and then look to see about whether or not that drug is being effective. You also need to identify the other side effects that you might need to address or side effects that you might want to implement certain strategies so that you can avoid having those side effects. And then you have to think about what's important for me to teach the patient. You've been learning a little bit about that as you've been doing your medication teaching videos. So you've been learning what is important and what's not important to include in that teaching. So here again is, is Mr. Meyer. Uh, again, he's 78 years old and he's got a diagnosis of heart failure. And he's got lots of symptoms of heart failure. One of them is this peripheral edema. Others are he's got congestion in his lungs because he's got so much pressure that the fluid is building up in his lungs. He can't sleep lying down. And these are all problems that have to be dealt with. And the drug that we're going to be giving him is furosemide. So as we talked about, that you're going to be using this kind of type of template. And you know you can morph this type of template if this doesn't work for you, but make certain that you have a card that addresses these issues. And also some of you, again, are very visual. So if you want to put pictures on it, so um, the way that I can picture drugs, again, is by visualizing the patient. So whatever you need to do to remember that. And that's why those videos are important when you start looking at the, the various different drugs is those videos are going to demonstrate sometimes what's happening physiologically to the patient, what's happening with clinical presentations. So that's another way for you to be linking that material together when it comes to the drugs. So this is your basic template, and you can see it's, it includes everything that's in your textbook, drug action, drug adverse effects. It's looking at your contraindications, um, not only for drug to drug, but other health problems that the client might be having, and also looking at your nursing care. And your nursing care, of course, is dependent upon what happens with the drug action and adverse effects and what you need to be uh, paying attention to. So again, we're going to walk through how we go through all these, these elements and then develop a med card. So again, when you put in the med card, on the med card, the drug action, what you're looking for is, again, the basic action. You don't have to go into long detail how it works on the cellular level. Um, you want to stay kind of basic so that you know exactly the physiologic response that you want to have happen with the medication. So that goes, again, back to some of the pathophysiology so you understand how that works. So you just think for a minute right now about Mr. Meyer, he's got this heart failure. So you, the drug action is gonna help that. So it's gonna to help to basically make it easier for him to breathe by offloading fluid. It's going to decrease his peripheral edema because it's taking fluid off him. It's, it's going to also decrease his weight. Um, and that all goes back to the action of the drug. And that's the cool thing about it. And that's the way I want you to be thinking about these drugs because if you look at the drug action and then you connect it to the patient, you can kind of see then how that drug works, and that's what's really important. So here's your drug action, and now we're going to populate our template. 
So you can see on this template, it's very basic. It just says that it blocks the reabsorption of sodium and chloride. It causes diuresis or fluid loss. It, along with that, it loses other things. And again, when you see these actions, you want to be thinking about, well, what other kinds of things are causing, what other kinds of problems could this be causing? So when you look at that, you think, okay, I look at that list, oh, okay, potassium loss. I know potassium is kind of serious, so I better pay attention to that. Calcium loss can be a, present a problem. And then you can also think, if I'm taking off all this fluid, what's going to happen to blood pressure? So when you just take a look at the action of the drug, you already should be starting to think about what are the adverse effects that could be happening that I want to be monitoring the patient for or helping to avoid those from occurring. So let's look at then the next section. So the side effects are the next section of that template. And when you look at those side effects, they are also called adverse effects. These are the things that we don't necessarily want to have happen, but they come along with the drug. So with all these good things, with offloading all the, the fluid on this patient, there's gonna come some, some not so nice things. So you have to think about what they are. Again, you've looked in your textbook, you've pulled those things out. And when you look pulling those things out, you wanna also be thinking about when do you have to notify the prescriber if they're occurring? Is there a certain action that you have to take right away with some of those side effects? And those are the types of questions you're gonna be seeing on your, your test. So here's the next section. So now I, I've talked about my, my action and now I've got my adverse effects. And so I take a look at those adverse effects and again, it's come right out of your textbook. So sometimes I like to look at them in systems because then that helps me to mentally do a head to toe assessment. So GU, well, of course, because it's blocking that reabsorption of sodium and chloride, it's basically going to make the patient urinate and that's why the patient develops polyuria. So you have to think about then what then that looks like if there's too much fluid loss, too much urination, and then you're gonna see signs and symptoms of dehydration. And what does that look like? So that's important to include in that because sometimes in your test, you just don't see the term polyuria or dehydration. You have to recognize the signs and symptoms what the patient is experiencing to identify that it is dehydration and it's a secondary effect of the drug. So then again, Taking a look at some other things on there, you see that it also causes potassium loss. Okay, we talked about potassium loss, the adverse effect of that. If you remember from patho, what potassium loss can do, it can really mess up with heart rhythm, and that can be a pretty serious side effect. So you want to think about that again, and you're going to have to monitor for that. So that's uh, something that we'll talk about in just a little bit. You also want to think about what it's doing to the venous system as we lose fluid we are going to be having problems with our problems, or they may not be problems in Mr. Meyer's case if he's hypertension or hypertensive, that we're going to see blood pressure go down. And in his case, this is a good thing. But we always have to remember that sometimes overzealous action of drugs takes us the other way. So to be careful that it's not dropping his blood pressure too much. And then it turns into something we don't want to have happen. So these are some things that are actions, but there's another very interesting action that you pulled out of your textbook and that was that it inhibits insulin release. Oh, okay. So now we gotta start thinking about, oh, maybe we need to be monitoring glucose levels. So that's, that's something interesting. Now some other side effects that don't go directly to the action of the drug is that it is hard, furosemide is hard on the ears. So that means that you have to assess the client, and we'll talk about that in a second, about um, hearing. So these are all based on your, your action, your drug, and then your side effects. And again, besides what we talked about, the excess of urination, look at the other things that uh, electrolyte imbalances it can create. It can create problems with low sodium, low chloride, we talked about low potassium, and also low calcium. So you can imagine, there's a side effect of one of the things you're going to have to be monitoring patient for is what? The electrolyte imbalances, okay? And monitoring, you know, particularly for potassium, and that's why I had that starred as a priority assessment. And also, the other priority assessments are things that are go back to ABCs. Arrhythmias can cause problems with uh, breathing and circulation. Uh, arrhythmias can cause problems um, also with um, blood pressure. And those are all things that you need to be thinking about 
when you're looking at your side effects. Okay, the side effect of ototoxicity isn't as critical, so your priorities are going to be the ones that are starred. So again, when you go through your readings, identify those ones that are starred, or I should say, ones that are, are priority, so you can star them on, on your sheet here. All right, let's move on. So after that comes, so we've got the action and the side effects. Now we're going to go to contraindications. Contraindications and interactions are, are reasons that um, we should not give the drug or be very careful in giving the drug, or there's going to be interactions that can be from other drugs, it can be drug-to-drug -drug interaction, or it can be food interactions, and or lifespan. You know, is this drug um, contraindicated in pregnancy? So these are the things, again, to be thinking about and put these on the med guide. Okay, so here's the next one. So the next column now is your contraindications. And your contraindications are reasons, again, to not give the drug or to give it with care. So again, if this drug go back to your action, what that drug does is it's causing you to lose fluid. When you lose fluid, your blood volume goes down, so your blood pressure can go down. So again, makes sense, right? And then you can see some other things that are listed there is contraindicated in pregnancy. Okay, I better remember that. Also, that if I have a patient that has severe renal failure, that they're going to have a problem with this drug because it's probably not going to work or it's going to put excessive um, uh, strain on the kidneys. Again, some contraindications are diabetes and other drugs that have similar side effects. So if you've got adverse effect of, of ototoxicity of furosemide, you know that uh, acetylsalicyclic acid, uh, aspirin, also has that. Also, one of the, uh, the antibiotics you've talked about or learned about is the aminoglycosides, like gentamicin, has ototoxicity. So that's going to pre present a problem also with a patient who's taking furosemide. So now we have to think about how do we assess for effectiveness? So let's think about that for a second. And when we think about monitoring for effect effectiveness, we have to go back to what is that drug doing? And we'll get to that in just a minute, how you put this on your medication card. You also need to think about your other nursing care. So part of your nursing care is assessing for the effectiveness. The other part of this is to, what do you have to do before you give the drug? Do you know how to give the drug? Do you give this IV push? Do you give it orally? You also need to know, do you, do you need to give it with food, without food? You also need to know what are the key indicators that that drug is working. So you have to think about that and, and wind that into and bundle that into your nursing care. And again, that's your nursing care is about teaching the patient. It's about the, the action side effects of the drug and also when the patient can notify the health care provider. So when you're thinking about nursing care, you also want to think about interventions to make certain the patient is safe. So if this drug has, for example, a side effect of hypotension, one of the interventions you want to think about is, is the patient you know, so lightheaded that when, when Mr. Meyer gets out of bed, that he's going to uh, fall. And that's a safety concern. So I have to think about teaching him things like get out of bed slowly. So anytime we have a drug that the blood pressure goes down, that the impact of the drug, if it goes down too, too low, it's going to present some problems with lightheadedness. And we have to protect the patient from injury. Right? We also have to talk to the patient about safe home management of drugs. Uh, Mr. Meyer was also on nitroglycerin, so he had to be taught to where to keep that in his in his home. He had to be taught to not carry that drug next to his his chest because that it would be too warm and it could potentially break down. So those are some additional teaching things that you'd want to think about in relationship to the drug. So client teaching then, again, this is all part of your nursing care, is about how to take it, how to make it work better, how can you prevent those side effects, and how to tell whether it's working or not, and again, to contact the provider. So you have to translate all that into connecting the dots when it comes to your medication guide. So here's your final medication guide. And you can see it's got it's all populated with all this information. So you we populate already with the action, the adverse effects, the contraindications when we don't give it, and then we have your specific nursing care. And again, your nursing care should you can pull that out from your textbook. But I don't want you to just stop here. I don't want you to just look at this and memorize this sheet. 
The only way 